today on the Scott Thompson Show on AM 900 CHML. If you've been watching any of the news over the course of the weekend, uh, you saw what's happening along the Mexican-U.S. Uh, border. Uh, CNN saying in a rare statement on a policy issue, First Lady Melania Trump weighed in through her spokesperson on the immigration crisis taking place in, at America's borders. Quote, Mrs. Trump hates to see children separated from their families and hopes both sides of the aisle can finally come together and achieve immigration reform. Uh, Trump, who has made uh, Trump, who has uh, made helping children, uh, of course, part of her Be Best program, uh, is speaking out uh, against basically what her husband has imposed. A Trump administration policy now charges every adult crossing the border illegally with federal crimes, as opposed to referring those with children mainly to the immigration ports, uh, courts, as previous administrators did, as our last guest uh, expressed, because the new government is changing the parents in or putting them in through the justice system, the kids are being separated from the parents, and there's no clear uh, process for reunif- reunification, uh, other than uh, you know trying to get hotlines set up to keep each side in contact with each other. Uh, the policy to refer all adults for charges was publicly announced back in May, and they said that they would uh, be zero tolerance. Or the zero tolerance. They would uh, be prosecuting 100% of these cases. Ne- nearly 2,000 kids have been separated from their parents and guardians and placed in holding facilities between April and May of this year, says uh, Homeland Security. And, of course, public outcry coming in the wake of images and stories of children caught in the middle of this controversy as uh, they try to figure out the immigration system. Uh, Very bizarre and and, and odd when you think that... um, Not only are uh, politicians speaking out, but former first ladies. Uh, Two first ladies, uh, obviously, so far, meaning Melania and also Barbara Bush, uh, sorry, Laura Bush, um, sorry, uh, wrote several op-ed pieces in the Washington Post expressing displeasure on what is happening. To talk about all of this, Andrew Oakes is with us. Andrew is a speaker, award-winning television producer, firstladies.com to find out more. And Andrew is with us now. Andrew, thanks so much for the time. Much appreciated. No, Scott, it's always great to be on with you. Um, Obviously, we haven't seen a lot of Melania Trump compared to perhaps uh, past first ladies recently. Uh, Certainly not speaking up a lot other than the odd children's uh, uh, cause that she uh, pursues. Uh, it sort of sounds like she's saying that the husband isn't her husband isn't governing with uh, with a heart. Is that safe to say? Well, Melania Trump is going to speak out on a couple of things, as I would think and, and have predicted in the past. And it's immigration and children. She herself, the only second foreign born first lady, the first foreign born first lady was Louisa Catherine Adams back in the 1800s. So this is this is a first for for modern America or the you know the 20th and 21st centuries. So I'm not surprised that she is speaking out on immigration, especially when it brings in the fact of children. I mean, it's the reason she didn't move to D.C. and people charged her with not embracing the role when she moved to D.C. It was to let her son finish school in D.C. and the be best, as you mentioned. So it shouldn't surprise too many people that if she's going to speak up against policy. This is it because it involves two things very near and dear to her heart. She did it safely and she did it cautiously. In she released a statement. Um, she doesn't do a lot of public events. You're 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 right, and that's not the platform where she chooses to do a lot of her work. She prefers to do stuff behind the scenes and sort of a more intimate setting, you could say. Um, she didn't really come out against her husband in the sense that he is saying. It's the Democrats' fault, and the Democrats, of course, are saying it's the Republicans' fault, and that's the that's the blame game that goes on in D.C. all over the place. So what she said was, we need to unify right and left and make a better policy. So indirectly, she is criticizing the current policy, but the president holds that the current policy is in place because the Democrats didn't do something. So I guess what I'm saying is she's got a back door on this where she can come out and say, I'm not saying anything against my husband. I'm just saying that we need immigration reform, which, uh, you know, this goes back to Bush W, you know, and, and that's where, where Laura Bush comes into play. So because she's calling on both parties to come together and, and, and come up with some sort of new policy, it takes the shine off. It takes the light off her husband then, per se. 
Exactly, 100%. And, and it's, a, it's a smart move, it's a safe move, and it's a move that most first ladies uh, um, implement. You know, they, they, they're the unifiers, they're the humanitarians. Barbara Bush uh, 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 was mentioned in Laura Bush's article very effectively what she did for her husband's administration when it came to the untouchables, the HIV AIDS epidemic. When it first started out in the 80s, there were these children that no one wanted to touch. They were basically dying of HIV AIDS. And, and Mrs. Bush went in not as a polit- Mrs. Barbara Bush went in not as a political statement, but as, as Laura Bush says in the article, it was the right thing to do. She embraced this child that needed this, this love at this time. Barbara Bush losing a daughter, uh, a very young, uh, uh, their, their daughter Robin died at the age of three. It's, it's in, it's in a humanitarian image that these first ladies fulfill for their husbands to indirectly move policy and agenda forward. They just have to do it in a very careful way, which I would say Melania Trump did, did, a, 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 did what she should do. She came out on a humanitarian issue. It shows that it, she's true to her values for immigration and kids, but it's not a direct criticism of her husband. It's, in fact, indirectly supporting what the president is saying in that Congress has to come together and figure this out, this problem of immigration form, which, which you know, we've... we've We've never been able to, to solve to, to, to any, any type of effective degree uh, in, in, the, in the United States. Uh, you know, for Melania to call on both sides of the House to, to, to come together on this, that being said, it was the Republicans who did implement this. It was the Republicans who decided to move forward with a zero-tolerance policy and enforce this. Can this be used against her? I mean, how, how careful do first ladies have to be that they do come out on the same side as, as well, the president? Well, that's, that's an excellent point, Scott. And, I mean, these, these first ladies get criticized when they wear the wrong shoes. So, you yeah. know, they get criticized for everything. And I'm actually, I will say this. I will go on record saying I'm, I'm very surprised Melania Trump came out on policy because I just didn't think she was going to be that type of first lady. This is a bold step for her. And it could be seen and will be seen, and it's not altogether incorrect to be seen as a slight against her husband's party, against the Republicans. Uh, Betty Ford did this very, very famously, uh, uh, spoke uh, uh, out against her husband's party, again, the Republican Party, and her husband, Gerald Ford, in numerous occasions on ERA and, and, and drug use and, and uh, uh, premarital sex. There were some comments. Um, uh, the, she, she, she did not do her husband any political favors, but she's remembered as one of our most influential and most popular first ladies. She did wonders for, for uh, uh, cancer awareness and, and, and drug addiction. And now, again, Laura Bush in, in these comments that she's made, and she does, you know, this is a remarkable thing. I don't think a lot of people know. Laura Bush does about 200 events a year. She is a very, hmm. very busy first lady, former first lady. And she does it quietly. She does it very quietly, gracefully, and she is promoting her husband's legacy, as all these first ladies do. And her husband, George W. Bush, has decided to take, some would call it a wise, step back and sort of just let the dust settle from his administration because it went back and forth, and he, he didn't leave with the best of poll numbers. But Laura Bush left with amazing poll numbers. So she's out not pushing this agenda, but but supporting a legacy and supporting the good work that her husband did, in her opinion, and and doing a lot of events like this. And Melania is setting the stage. It's it's not unprecedented. She's she's doing very similarly what other first ladies have done in the past on a very important and controversial issue. But but sure, uh, it could come back and 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 haunt her. Will people view Melania's statement? Uh as possibly helping the president, uh, because it is not necessarily with what he is supporting. It, it, you know, to what degree, I guess you can debate how, how much she's disagreeing with him or agreeing with him. But are those that are sitting back and thinking, well, maybe she can talk some sense into him? Well, you know, I, I think people will get out of this what they want. You know, that, that's, what, that's what news and, and headlines and, and the Internet have, have done for us in modern times. And, and, and because the statement is not – the statement was crafted very carefully so it could be interpreted either way. Is she criticizing her husband? Maybe a little bit because she doesn't, under, she doesn't, 
she's not pleased with the situation that's going on with the children. But is she also, in a sense, supporting his words and saying, look, I agree with my husband. The right and the left need to come together on this, because every soundbite you see, Donald Trump is saying, the Democrats can fix this. The Democrats can fix this. And it's, it's political theater, and it's what we're used to and what we've come to in this modern, modern age of, of news and information. But, um, you know, she's, she's staying true to her cause, and I think that's the thing that we need to focus on here. Whether she's supporting her husband or criticizing her husband, it, it, it almost doesn't matter in her sense because she's staying true to her values and true to her causes. Immigration, very near and dear to her heart. Children, her main cause, her main thrust, her main focus in life is children and the well-being of children. Everything that she touches has a stamp of children on it. So this, I think, is another example of Melania Trump staying focused and only entering the limelight or getting on the stage when she feels strongly about something. And she does it, in my opinion, very effectively. This goes along with the, the bullying campaign. And I think she will get criticized for this. People will, or, or people will, the president will get criticized this. And Melania Trump doesn't react to her detractors or her critics. And that, I think, is a leading by example for, for her anti-bullying campaign, is that if someone says something bad about you or something you disagree with, you just move on. Just move on and ignore it, and it goes away. And the news cycle picks up with something different. But I think that when in, in, in the case of, of politicians and, and these people, that, that when you do address it and when you do have retorts and comebacks and things like that, it just fans the fire and the criticism and, and the bad press continues. So whatever backlash does come from this statement, uh, negative or, or otherwise, I think she'll ignore it and move on, keeping children first. And, you know, child immigrants or children of immigrants is, is just, you know, tailor-made for her and her causes. Uh, many have uh, questioned the kind of relationship that the president and the first lady have. Does this say anything about their relationship as husband and wife? It could. It, it very much could. You know, and and again, this this is this goes back to Melania's character. If she's at an event where she doesn't necessarily. I hate to say support. If, if it's an event that she's not gung-ho about, if it's not about children, if it's not about one of her causes, if it's sort of just a standard run-of-the-mill, have-to-be-there, support-your-husband kind of thing, she's not holding his hand. They don't appear to be friendly sometimes, and there's criticism of whether she's smiling or not. But then you see something. I promise you, when the, the, the uh, um, uh, king and queen of, of Spain, uh, the, the dignitaries from Spain are coming next week, she's going to throw another outrageous party with all the frills and she's going to be dressed to the nines and looking elegant and the the the, the dinner is going to be fantastic and the guests and the entertainment that's where she really shines in that hostess role and that sort of pomp and circumstance that she enjoys and does so well with that that's going to be the next news cycle and that's where everyone's going to be in another week when she goes out with the president i believe it was in Philadelphia at an at a, um, anti-drug, you know, the opioid campaign that they're trying to push forward as well. Very supportive of that effort. And we see them almost loving, you know, they're, they're holding hands, they're whispering in each other's ears and things like that. I mean, if Melania is in, she's in. If she's not in, she's not in, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know where you stand with right. Melania, I think. And, and, and so as to you know, their relationship, I think it just supports that more. You know, the president, her husband has done something, or he and his party have done something together that ended up not working out very well for children, we can say that, to, to say the least. Melania has children at the core of her heart and the core of her causes, and she's going to step out and say something, whether it looks like she's supporting her husband or criticizing her husband. I think it just showed a lot of class that she did it in a way that was not aggressive, and could be explained to say, you know, this isn't about Republicans, this isn't about Democrats, this is about children in warehouses mm. and places being separated from their children, and we need to put down the left and right and the political parties and get together, which I think Laura Bush said so eloquently in her article was just, I, I thought it was fantastic. Because keep in mind, George Bush, George W. Bush, Laura Bush's husband, he, he, uh, campaign for immigration reform. I, Mrs. Bush, Laura Bush, says in that article, yeah. we know immigration reform needs to happen. It just needs to happen the right way, and we need to remember our core values as Americans and as humanitarians and do it in the right way. And she even says, she said, I left Washington a decade ago 
but I know there's still good people there that can get this done. So I think both first ladies, Laura Bush and Melania Trump, have done a fantastic job to come out in that traditional first lady's humanitarian role and say, put down your elephants and your donkeys, put down your parties, and mm. let's get together and do this for the right reason, for the right people, which in this case is the children. So the first lady can call out the president. What about other first ladies calling out, um, um, uh, um, not future, but current uh, presidents? Is that ever shunned? Is that is that normal? Um, You know... <sighs> It's funny. I, I, I thought about that a lot this morning, you know, and, and, and over the weekend as I was looking at this. It, it, the only time something like this is really frowned upon is when one president criticizes another. A former president criticizes a president when he's overseas. That's a bad PR move. I know that President Carter did that with George W. Bush, and he got caught grief for it because it's kind of like, you know, the, the it's, it's like... It's like Fight Club. It's like some, you know, it's like a code. Right. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you just you just don't do it. Yeah. But first ladies get a pass on some things that, that politicians don't. Because, as I've said on your show and, and in my books and, and everything, first ladies are the most powerful and influential, and influential, unelected and unpaid women in the world. There's no job description. We can't really tell them what to do or say because we elect them to say or do anything and we don't pay them to say or mm. do anything. They use this platform for however they see fit. Laura Bush has also said, and she's correct, every first lady can make it her own role and do with it what she wants. And that includes nothing. So when a first lady comes out and makes some sort of statement like this, it's it's really it's really not frowned upon. It's taken at its core value. You want to go back in history to the Civil War, one of the roughest times in American history. First Lady Sarah Polk, after the White House in Nashville, Tennessee. No, not Nashville. I'm sorry. It was uh, um, no, it was Nashville. I believe it was Nashville, t- Tennessee, where Polk Place was. Sarah Polk, former First Lady, after her husband died was entertaining at dinner parties Union and Confederate soldiers. They've always been this mediator. They've always been able to remove themselves from policy and politics while still commenting Mm. on policy and politics. And it's because they have that influence. They've been in the White House. They know that role, but they're not elected or paid. So it's basically a first lady statements are all op-eds. You know, they're they're Yeah, good point. Andrew Oaks has been with us, author, speaker, and award-winning television producer. You can find out more about Andrew at firstladiesman.com. That's firstladiesman.com. Andrew, as always, thank you for the time. Much appreciated. Download the podcast on iTunes or Google Play and listen to The Scott Thompson Show weekdays from noon to 3 on AM 900 CHML.